Yo guys, Jonathan here, and I've had about 48 hours with the new 16-inch MacBook Pro. I wanted to go over some initial impressions, what I really like, and honestly, just to see how fast this machine is. So the keyboard is fantastic, and I saw a few questions asking, why did you not ask Phil about the keyboard? And honestly, literally everyone at the press event asked about the keyboard, so I don't wanna be the 56 guy just to beat that question to death. It would be one thing if they brought this machine out and didn't change anything, but they did, and yeah, it took way, way longer than it needed to, but by them changing the keyboard on this, that was them admitting that the butterfly keyboard did not work. This is very similar to what you'd find on an iMac or iMac Pro keyboard, and it is much, much better. Also, just like the Rock, the physical escape key has returned, and apparently that was the number one complaint with the MacBook, even more so than the actual keyboard itself. Now, if you haven't really caught up with this 16 inch MacBook Pro, it's slightly thicker, slightly heavier, and that allows them to pack a bigger battery and also implement better thermal cooling. So it's cool to see Apple really just going completely backwards in a world where they're usually thinner and lighter, all the things, it's nice to see them take a different approach. The speakers on this thing, oh my God, is ridiculous. I've always enjoyed speakers on a MacBook Pro, but this is a completely different level. Without getting super nerdy or technical, I'll save that for the full review, there's actually half an octave more of low end or bass that you hear, so it almost feels like there's a subwoofer, and that combined with the separation and the stereo image is insane. From there, the microphone is kind of dumb good, and I'm definitely gonna push this even further. So drop a like if you wanna see me try and record something crazy, like an entire song with this microphone. But in the meantime, I used it for a voiceover intro, I use it to mic myself with the Phil interview, and also got a chance to hang with the incredibly talented Julia Wolf, so definitely make sure to check her out down below. And this next test is almost like this MacBook microphone speakerception. The audio track that she's singing over is being played back through the MacBook Pro speakers, and then everything, including the voice, is being recorded with the MacBook Pro microphone, so it gives you an idea of not only how the microphone sounds, but the speakers as well. Flip the pillow over to the cool side I got dreams that keep me up at night Take another shower, pass the time Flush face means I'm still alive All the wrong people keep me up at night On the R train trying to justify Not accepting a nine to five My patience is compromised I will never act like something I'm not Don't blame my shyness, I just don't wanna talk But I think a lot People can interpret it however they want it's how I feel. Hey. Now, as far as performance, again, I do prefer real-world tests over synthetic benchmarks, which is probably all you're gonna see on YouTube right now, but I do enjoy them to give you some sort of baseline. So in Geekbench 5, everything lines up just like I thought it would. There really isn't a huge jump from 2018 to 2019 or from six core to eight core because we're only testing one single core. But where I did see a difference is if we take that 15 inch MacBook Pro with the same exact processor, we're getting better performance, most likely due to the better thermal design on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. It's kind of a similar story with multi-core performance, but here you really see the jump from eight cores to six cores and even going back down to four cores on that 2016 machine. Same exact thing here with Cinebench. There's not a huge jump from 2018 in that six core processor to the eight core up to the 16 inch MacBook Pro. But when we jump over to multi-core performance again, you see the big difference with that eight core processor versus a six core and again, that four core machine. So again, if you're kind of stacking them side by side with that 15 inch machine versus the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the exact same CPU, it's gonna be pretty close with slightly better performance on the 16 inch MacBook Pro because of that thermal cooling. Where things absolutely start to jump and you see the real performance gains are with the graphics. So this machine is equipped with the maxed out AMD Pro 5500M with a massive eight gigs of GDDR6 memory. I got a chance to run Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is a beautiful game, and these results line up perfectly. What these results tell me is that 2018 six core MacBook Pro without Vega graphics really wasn't much better than the 2016 MacBook Pro. You can see a pretty good jump going from that six core machine without Vega to Vega 20, and then even more so with the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So Final Cut Pro 10, I will definitely have a bigger variety of tests, including Premiere, drop a comment on anything you wanna see in that full in-depth review. But in the meantime, I took that Terra Junior music video, which is like nine streams of 4K HEVC with different frame rates. I took that unrendered timeline and then exported that to ProRes 422. 
Again, that 2018 six core MacBook Pro without Vega wasn't that impressive of a machine and the 2016 MacBook Pro held up really well. You can definitely start to see the gains with Vega 20, which is significantly faster. But as we hop over to the 16 inch MacBook Pro, that is even faster, almost 40 seconds faster, which kind of blew my mind. Now with Final Cut Pro 10, the more powerful graphics you have, the faster your renders are gonna be, including your background render. This normally happens in the background when you're doing things, but if we turned it off and then turned it on and just let it go from start to finish, this will really give you an idea of what that graphics card does in terms of performance. You can see those two extra cores on that 2018 MacBook Pro definitely make a difference compared to that 2016 model. Jumping up to the 2019 eight core machine, that shaves about 30 seconds off this timeline render. But as we jump over to that 16 inch MacBook Pro, it is a beefy, thick, powerful boy with two minutes and 36 seconds, which is significantly faster than everything. So here I wanted to take things just one step further. So that intro clip that you saw, that was actually 8K red raw footage that was shot at a 14 to one compression. I took that footage and dropped it into a 4K timeline, left it unrendered, it was about two minutes long, and then bounced that to ProRes 422. Keep in mind, there should be better optimization with RED coming soon. But in the meantime, again, there were still some pretty big gains with this 16 inch MacBook Pro. So yeah, with my initial testing, this machine is no joke. It is powerful, it is faster, it's thicker, the keyboard's awesome. It's looking really good overall. But if you guys wanna see anything covered in that full review or have any questions, drop that down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you missed it, again, I got a chance to sit down with the man, the myth, the legend, Phil Schiller. Got to interview him, that is linked up here and down below. Thank you guys again, this is Jonathan and I will catch you guys later.